Hey guys, all right, so in this video, I'm gonna be discussing uh, manual idle control valve or idle air control valve. Um, this is the uh, manual idle air control valve that replaces the factory, the factory idle air control valve that goes up here. It's just a single plug with a plunger that goes in and out that controls how much air is going into your engine. Um, as far as I can tell, they use they use the same unit for Sportsters, both 883 and 1200 from 2007 up to 2020. Um, 2000 to 2005 Dyna and Softail, and uh, 2002 to 2017 V Rod. Um, so on, so basically, what you're doing is you're just controlling the idle. Um, manually. Um, obviously on a cold start you're gonna want to uh, uncrank this a couple turns so it's like lefty loosey righty tighty. Lefty um, or I guess uh, counterclockwise will allow more air into the engine which you want on a cold start um, and then after a little bit you know after a minute or whatever not even 30 seconds you can um, tighten it down a little bit. This one, so this one was from American Motors USA, um, and it costs anywhere between $140 to $190. I've had it for um, going on two years. I haven't had any issues with it. This one, <clears throat> this one I purchased on eBay. I purchased this one first. This was the first one I found. Um, it came from Italy. I thought I like the design better. It's kind of like that billet aluminum cut. It's got sharp points. I kind of like that, that look. Um, this one, the guy took like over a month uh, just to ship it to me. Um, and then it took another like six weeks to get. So I tried to re refund it uh, before he shipped it to me. I told him don't ship it. He shipped it to me anyway. So now I have it. Um, so I'm going to sell it if anyone's interested. I paid, I looked up what I paid. It was $125 with shipping included. Um, so like I said, it came from Italy, uh, CNC billet. I like the knob better, uh, than the one from American Motors. Um, however, one difference that I like better about this one is that if you look, this one has like built in notches or clicks. I don't know if you can hear that. So it kind of makes it easier. Like I know from like five clicks up to five clicks down is basically controlling the idle from, you know, cold start all the way down. Like five clicks will get me idling at like 950 RPM. Whereas this one is just, it's smooth action. So what I would probably do is like maybe mark, like do some testing, mark one of these teeth so that you kind of know where it needs to be. Um, because it's only going to be like maybe half a turn total. Um, that's all you're really going to use it for. Um, so the reason, the reason uh, I've, <laughs> I have three, this is, this is a brand new one. I only used it for uh, maybe two weeks or something. Um, but the reason being is uh, some Sportsters, they, they have like, so my Sportster specifically, um, it will take over six minutes for it to idle down and it's typical startup cold cold idle will be like 1600 rpm and it will take a full six minutes to gradually drop its rpm down to a thousand rpm um, a thousand rpm is target um, goal for these for the ecu and the engine um, if uh if, what was I gonna say? <laughs> so I know on the Sportsters, you don't have to have the plug plugged in. Um, it will not throw a code if that plug is not plugged in. I, as you can see, I did a wire tuck on mine. Um, I basically just taped it off and it's it's up under here, the, the plug that plugs into the factory idle air control valve. Um, I think on some, I think on the Dynas, you might have to have it plugged in and what some guys do is, um, they'll just, they'll leave it plugged in, but they put it under their seat. There's enough room under there. I don't know. I don't have one. Um, I would probably experiment. 
Um, but I know for sure, whoop, almost tripped. I know for sure if you on the Sportsters, this is a 2015, I don't know if I said that, but this is a 2015. I know for sure if you have this plugged in and you start it up, this plunger will, the motor inside will shoot this plunger out and it's spring loaded. It will shoot it out across the garage floor and you'll have to go looking for it. And after that happened, I'm pretty sure it broke. And that's why I ended up having to get a new one. I, uh, it might not have broke. I thought maybe something was just wrong with um, this unit here. And that's what was causing, um, it, uh, I think it's called like cold idle delay or something like that. But anyway, even after I'd be out riding around, if I say like we parked for like 30 minutes, I would go back out, start the bike up and the idle would be right back up at 1600 RPM. And it would, it might only take like four minutes to drop down, but still it was just a gradual, gradual, gradual drop. So with this, I can start the bike up, you know, run it 16, 1500 RPM for like 20 seconds. And then I can give it a, a one or two clicks and the idle will drop. Now, with that being said, it will, sometimes it will pop up a check engine light on the dash because the engine is looking for target RPM. So say it's, it wants to target 1500 RPM. And if I have it at 1300 RPM, it might throw a code, like a check engine light. Now, that being said, it's a soft code. It's not a hard code. So as the temperature rises, and the idle starts to fall like the computer idle it's wanting to see 1500 okay now it's getting a little warmer now it wants to see 1400 rpm now it's a little warmer i want to see 1300 rpm when it sees 1300 rpm the check engine light will turn off and it won't come back okay i hope that makes sense so the ecu wants to see a target rpm <clears throat> if it doesn't see that target rpm it will throw a soft code check engine light on your dash but once it once the ecu gets down to that rpm range that it wants to see the check engine light will turn off okay um what else did i want to talk about i think that's pretty much it um i've had this thing down just you know for shits and giggles just I've, i think i've had it down to like 850 rpm obviously uh, i wouldn't recommend it but it will get that low <laughs> um and it does sound badass however oil pressure you know there's concerns about oil pressure i get that um i think they recommend don't drop it lower than 900 rpm um and once it's like fully fully warmed up i can put it at 900 rpm it sounds cool um i don't get any like battery lights or anything like that uh, I haven't had any charging issues. Like I said, we're going on two years with this, guys. So um, I think that pretty much covers it. I don't want this video to be too long, um, but I'll start it up and just do like a quick, uh, just kind of you, so you guys can see what I'm talking about, okay? So this is cold. you can see like it, it wants the rpm to be higher as soon as i raised it up the check engine light goes away so it, it works the same way just like raising the rpm uh shuts the check engine light off lowering the rpm does the exact same thing so like i said it's a soft code it's not it that doesn't change how the bike rides um and uh, like i said once it gets up to where it needs to be or once it drops once the ecu sees that it um is reached its target RPM, that soft code goes away. Um, 
One last thing, I guess, is the ECU, once it's fully warmed up, it, its target RPM is 1,000 RPM. Um, but you can, it'll comfortably run between 900 and 950 RPM uh, without setting off the, the soft check engine light, if that's something that um, you're worried about. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna be selling, I'm gonna be selling this other thing. I have no use for it, you know? I, this one works great, um, and I have no regrets. Oh, the other thing I was gonna say was I didn't, after doing all my research and seeing this one, this one I found, I live in Florida. This guy's uh, shop is actually in Daytona, like Daytona Bike Week, yeah, it's in Daytona. And I ordered that. Yes, it was, uh, you know, a few more dollars, but um, I got it in like two days. And the guy's super awesome. I think he's from Germany. He has a couple of videos. Um, he's got a, a pretty thick uh, German accent, but uh, he's, a, he's a cool guy. Um, we were talking back and forth. So anyway, um, I'm going to fire up the bike and uh, drop the RPMs down so you guys can hear it, okay? I'll be right back. Thanks guys. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Bye.